record this. Okay, so uh, listen, uh, welcome everyone. Um, it is, as I said earlier, off camera, it is it is August, it is technically still the summer. So obviously, you know, a, a Wednesday night, not the easiest time for people to, um, you know, join live on something like this. But we did, we did get about 50 people register. So the, the, this will be shared with everyone who registered for this evening. So obviously it's still worth um, if you like, Dara, going through the motions, uh, not through the motions, talking about what we're here to talk about, and hopefully um, people will get a chance to watch the recording back. So we are here to talk about a really, I, I mean, I think, um, I know Dara does, um, and I know, again, the course has generated a lot of really interesting, um, you know, interest and commentary and feedback. Um I'd almost position it like the next frontier of financial services. And I think it's a, a natural evolution that we are, I think, increasingly going to see, um, you know, take hold. And I think that the institutional interest, um, MICA, where we are in that authorization cycle, these are all really, um, I think, interesting tailwinds, maybe a little bit of headwinds in some cases. In where we are on this journey so for tonight let me just share my screen and i suspect we'll probably um get through this a little bit quicker than an hour um can you see the powerpoint slides on the screen dara hopefully yep yep cool okay so this is why we're here um a, a new offering I, I do actually think it really is um in the moment it's it's quite unique. I think, you know, we are very much trying to break new ground. We're trying to address where the challenges are and how do we. And again, there is a little bit of conflation of language that, you know, TradFi, DeFi, it's, it's a kind of simple way of saying where this convergence is happening. But, you know, DeFi in and of itself is not necessarily everything that we want to talk about. It's just a nice way to position it. Um, so tonight, um, probably we'll curtail these times a bit because I suspect we probably won't get the level of Q and A unless one has got twenty questions, which you might have uh, to ask. Um, me, me, myself, I, and Dara, who very much has been um, my co-conspirator in developing the course. Um, I was just going to give a little bit of a general overview, like the, the nuts and bolts, if you like, of what the course is, what it isn't. And then I was going to ask Dara maybe just to talk about why now is the time, um, literally, for a course like this. And this is potentially um, the first of a number of offerings in this kind of um, domain over the next whatever number of years. Q&A, if we have a Q&A, uh, obviously always like to answer questions and hear what people are thinking and why they might be interested. Uh, I will share the slides with the recording, obviously, after we finish tonight. Might be in the morning. I don't know, actually, probably a bit later because I've recorded it locally. I can share the recording, the slides to anyone who registered for tonight. And there were actually, Dara, I, I didn't share the list with you. There's some interesting people registered for tonight that I'm assuming they just couldn't make it in person. Um, but there were some very interesting names um, when I saw the list earlier. So... We have um, the website, we have um, or a web page, I should say, and we have the brochure. And I might just click into that right now. I'm going to come out of this and go back in and just going to jump into. Dara, can you see the brochure there? Yep. Cool. So if you go to the website, the web page, I'm just going to click into that. Can you see the web page, Dara? Yep. Sorry, it's a dread fear of mine that when you're doing this stuff on camera, you're talking about things and people are going, that's not what's on the screen. And obviously you need to be a bit careful. So listen, um, if you go to the PAT uh, programs, obviously you go through PAT Business School generally, courses, you'll see there's a obviously a web page for this course. What's there? There's the brochure, which I'm going to go back to in a moment. There's the timetable. I might just click into the timetable. Uh, when are we starting? The 25th of September. How many weeks? It's eight weeks. We say six to ten, but that's very flexible. It's probably going to be more like six to nine. 
obviously depends on the class, the content, how discursive things become or don't become. Uh, we don't tie you down for four hours. We understand that people are busy and committing to, um, just flicking around here now, committing to this is a commitment. It, it's, it's obviously time, it's money. Um, but obviously what we want to do, and I'll come to the, uh, the um, uh, brochure in a moment, what we really want to do, what we are absolutely 100% committed to is careers. So can you see careers, Dara? Dar yep. So this is really become very simple for me that why would you choose to do a course like this with PAT? Um, it's because I believe that you think it's going to help your career and it's going to help your career path. And by doing that for you as individuals, we believe that we can raise standards across the industry, that we can address demand for skill shortages in the industry. And the more I do this, the more I can clearly quantify and identify that. So we're very proud of this. We launched this a few months ago. We're working absolutely actively with all those recruitment agencies. And Hilt is a very interesting um, provider of supports. They call them career credits. I won't get into that too much tonight, but if you want to check out Hilt, really, very, very, um, I think, um, valuable asset for us in terms of helping our learners, which hopefully you might become in developing, you know, the skills that you need to interview CVs, LinkedIn profiles, you know, mock interviews, really helping you address where the opportunities are. And there are lots of opportunities, trust me. So I won't bore you too much, but please, if you get a chance, visit the Careers Hub. Um, the Careers Hub is really meant to just demonstrate we are serious about what we say we're trying to do. We are trying to develop talent. That means knowledge and skills, as you see on the, the, the backdrop behind me. And that leads to choice, choice in your careers, create opportunities. So do we believe there are lots of opportunities going back to the brochure? Just checking you can see the brochure, Dara. Yep. Cool. Do we believe there are lots of opportunities in this evolving convergence of the so-called traditional financial world into, you can call it crypto, you can call it DeFi, you can call it tokenization. There's, there's lots of different elements to it. But do we believe that there is demand for skills and therefore career opportunities in this evolving area? Of course we do. We wouldn't be here otherwise. So. If you get a chance, please check out the brochure or check out the web page. We actually are very proud of our brochures. We think our brochures are quite cool, actually. We think they're quite nicely put together. There is an awful lot of um, uh, information about what are we trying to do? What is this program trying to achieve? Who do we think would be the type of people who might be interested in doing this course or program? So I use program and course interchangeably. There's a lot of, I think, information about the eight weeks, so eight weeks or eight blocks of the course, what are we trying to address? And again, I'm just going to flick through that. I'm going to ask Dara maybe to talk about the course or the program itself a little bit more. Uh, assessment strategy, the assessment is very practical. There's no exam. It's going to be a very practical assessment of the knowledge that hopefully, and again, a practical task, what you've been asked to do. We're going to ask you to do something that applies very directly to a real world environment that demonstrates real knowledge and skills in a very kind of practical scenario. Um, again, what do you get at the end? You get, I hope, a digital badge, a certification that basically indicates and demonstrates that you have developed knowledge and skills that I think are very uh, much in demand and will be increasingly in demand as this industry, this part of the evolution of financial services takes more, if you like, effect. And underpinning a lot of it will be, you know, new regulation. So most of you, I think, have probably heard of, and I'm sorry, there's a few people that are waiting in the waiting room coming in now. Um, Mika, or M Mica, as some people call it, markets in crypto asset regulation. 
And this is going to be something that I think is going to be a very interesting opportunity for people in the financial services industry, whether you're currently in risk and compliance roles, whether you're in so-called TradFi, whether you're interested in working for a VASP or a CASP, as we go forward, virtual asset service provider, crypto asset service provider, whether you're interested in maybe working for a more traditional financial institution that is going to be tokenizing assets, real world financial world. I, I honestly think it's a clear trend, it's a clear evolution. What do we want to try and do? We want to try and give you an edge uh, where you have a knowledge and a skill set that myself and Dara, and I'm going to hand over to Dara in a moment, we think that there is demand for these skills because they're not there. They're not there. There's a lot of people who um, might have a certain familiarity with certain terminology. You live in a world of acronyms, but that sort of real fundamental foundational understanding of the technology, the products, the services, the market structures, it's not there. And, and I can only say that we know this from the conversations that we've had with lots of people, lots of institutions. Um, and that's what this course is attempting to do. It's attempting to help you develop those skills, but it's also very much designed to meet a demand that's there in the industry. So, Dara, I don't know if you want to say a few words about the course, what we're trying to achieve, um, your own background, stuff like that. Sure thing. Uh, thanks, Andrew. Um, and thanks, everybody, for joining this evening. So, uh, look, I suppose the, 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 the philosophy behind this course is uh, revolves around, uh, from my experience, from both working in the traditional finance area with, in, uh, in uh, uh, chairing the Irish Funds Fintech Working Group, working with State Street, a variety of other large uh, traditional finance uh, administrators and uh, working with a number of uh, asset managers, what have you. Uh, and at the same time being involved with uh, Blockchain Ireland uh, and looking at uh, the digital and emerging technology space. And there's an awful lot of noise out there. It's a very a very broad church, uh, as uh, as Juan would attest. Um, there are uh, from from a very esoteric and innovative and disruptive, and some might argue uh, risky, uh, 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 distributed finance offerings uh, to obviously the ubiquitous uh, Bitcoin and uh, Ethereum that we hear about all of the time. We've seen those values go up and down and up and down and up and down along the way, um, and so there's the these two uh, areas. Uh, but one thing that's key clear is, uh, you know, whether one is looking for uh, volatility or innovation or uh, alternatives to, um, to to other uh, assets of recourse, such as gold, uh, that digital assets are emerging as a genuine asset class. And, uh, and from that perspective, I suppose two things are happening in the first instance. In the traditional finance world, and though in the in in the particularly in the collective investment space and what have you, um, there is a growing uh, need to be aware of uh, of of these of these assets, these asset types, these instruments, uh, how they're how they're held, how they're managed, how they're traded, etc. Uh, as they start entering into client portfolios. In as they start entering into uh, wrapper type offerings such as exchange traded products, uh, what have you, and um, and so it, within our traditional finance world, there is an appetite amongst people to understand more about these assets, what they're like, what they mean, and what does all the jargon stand for, uh, and more importantly, in our risk aware regulated uh, uh, environment, uh, you know, and what are the risks associated with them. How do we how do we uh, how do we manage and mitigate those risks? Uh, how do we comply with the prevailing um, prevailing uh, regulations? The my car is obviously uh, coming into effect uh, at the end of this year, at the beginning of next year. Um, but there are also uh, you know MIFID and other standard financial uh, uh, regular regulatory regimes which may apply depending on um, depending on the nature of uh, of the asset. Or the manner in which it's held or traded, so it's quite a quite quite a quite a lot to get in there. At the same time, 
the um, the the digital asset side of the house, the uh, the innovators and the and the technologists who have been uh, you know working so hard in that space are also aware of the fact that they're kind of coming to a point where uh, you know the retail money uh, and the retail interest and I suppose the fan base that we'd see uh, investing and talking about and getting excited about um, these assets. Uh, that that really, if 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 these assets are to live up to their potential, and if this technology, the blockchain technology, is going to live to its uh, potential, then there's a need for institutional money to get involved. And if institutional money is going to get involved, then uh, it has to be within a regulated and risk managed and risk aware environment. So we have the perfect confluence of a a, a long established traditional finance world that needs to come to terms with new technologies, things like the tokenization of real world assets, the implication of those technologies in some of the existing product sets that we have today and in the uh, user experience and client and investor experience for the next generation of investors as they come through, because some of their expectations are being set by the immediacy and the, uh, and the clarity and the availability uh, in in handsets and what have you to invest, to divest, to subscribe, to redeem uh, quickly and immediately and look at one's returns and see the associated data in a way that hasn't really been possible in a traditional finance uh, space. And then, as I say, at the same time, you've got the digital asset guys who are going, well, if we want to play with grown-up money, then we've got to have grown-up structures around it. So that, that's the philosophy behind the course, is that we're looking to, to see those two worlds, bridge that gap, and, and establish two uh, interested learners, of whom there are many, um, to uh, bring them to uh, get them used to the language and the jargon and the uh, mindsets associated with both that innovative digital uh, groundbreaking uh, perspective and the risk-aware, traditional, uh, careful uh, management of investments uh, on behalf of the investor under the umbrella of uh, European regulation, which as always is focused on protecting the investor and assuring uh, systemic stability, what have you. So that's broadly what it's about. It's a generalist course, it's around putting a good, broad, horizontal swathe, talking about the various assets, talking about the ways that they're, uh, that they're used, talking about the opportunities and the threats associated with them, bringing that out into a risk mindset and evaluating them from that perspective and looking at how we can uh, empower ourselves in our own personal careers to uh, be at the, lead, at the head of the pack in terms of our understanding of both of, of that crossover of technologies and mindsets. It, um, it, and just, just to add to that, um, just gone back, taking a step back, um, because I know this is always a challenge, um, particularly when, you know, you start to introduce like, you know, terminology and acronyms and technological, whatever. This course is very much centered around first principles. First principles, foundations. Let, let's demystify some of the language because there is a lot of language, there's a lot of conflation, and let's demystify it. Let's give people a really good foundation where they can start to have proper conversations about what is, if you like, possible and how this is going to evolve. And it's to me really interesting because I think, you know, look, I, 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 I've been talking about tokenization for probably seven, eight years. One has probably been talking about it for longer. Dara definitely probably for longer. But there's a maturity now. It feels like we've moved into a different era. There was, let's just say in the last, say, five years, to just you know put a number on it, there was a lot of, let's say, number goes up. There was, there was a lot of conflation around, you know, valuations, new asset classes. I think we've probably moved a little bit beyond that. And I think Dara touched on it well. And we were talking about this earlier, Dara. You know, Bitcoin is an asset class now. It is. Whatever you think about Bitcoin, it's an asset class. It's an investable asset class. It goes up, it goes down. Whether you believe in the value of it, it doesn't matter. It's like a stock, you know. Uh, you know, It's obviously more volatile. It's obviously less established. But the point is that 
for me, Bitcoin is a use case. And Bitcoin has now demonstrated that you can tokenize, you can encrypt on a blockchain assets that will hold a certain value that will be investable to institutional, not just retail money. And regulation is Dara, I mean, and I can only say this one because you probably know me. Say three years ago, the number of conversations I had about, oh, we don't need to be regulated. Oh, no, you're going to be regulated. And anyway, we've moved beyond that. We've moved beyond that. So I think that when we say now, now is the time, the time is now, I do think we are on a tipping point where we are going to see increased um, interest. Uh, Dara, again, touched on institutional money because that's the big money. Um, we're going to see increased interest and increased adoption of what I like to call digital assets. You can call them crypto assets if you want to, but really it's about the next, I think, um, stage in the evolution of how financial markets, assets are tokenized, the custody, the regulation, the access, the fractionalization of assets, the creation of more capital, um, there's so many inherent benefits to this that I personally, and I think Dara would, would know this as well, the regulators, they know there are lots of potential benefits in this, but it's just got to be a safe regulated space. So this program is perhaps the first of a few that we might look to do over the coming years. But what it's meant to do is, as Dara again said better than I can, Let's let's close this gap. Let's start to close the gap between what so-called traditional finance people, which I would be one, think, and real innovators and cutting edge on the borders, say people might disagree. The time is now to close that gap. And again, me and Dara have talked about this. I'm a TradFi guy, but I get technology. And when I see change and innovation coming at you, You've got to embrace it. You've got to embrace it. So if you don't mind one, do you mind me? Do you mind if I ask you to say a few words? Because you're kind of up to hearing all this stuff and you're well versed in it. And um, you know, maybe just a few observations about why why you you're here tonight. Why do you think a course like this is needed? Yes. Thanks, Andrew. So I think now is the time, as you said. Um Regulation is key. Um, I think it's, it's going to be very difficult to have massive adoption without the, this digital asset class. And still some people will challenge that, you know, uh, being properly regulated. And I think now is the opportunity with Mika, um, and especially as you said, you know, trying to close the gap between financial yeah. services the way they are now or traditional financial services and uh, uh, innovative world that brings, say, not, not only blockchain technology in terms of distributed layer technology and uh, uh, cryptocurrencies, but there is, the ecosystem is so, um, so vast in terms of possibilities. Yeah. Because one of the things we we're talking about tokenization, but also uh, the metaverse is something that uh, is on hold at the moment because there is so much focus in artificial intelligence and the fight to a certain extent. But the metaverse is coming as well, you know. So I think that's uh, um, a huge wall of opportunity, and uh, the main thing is to, to be aware of what's happening now. And as you said, demystify it and come back to first principles. Exactly. Because in traditional finance, um, we don't really tend to use a lot of acronyms and some make things very <laughs> complex. So yeah, then, uh, yeah. especially the, the consultants, you know, like, oh, <laughs> and the lawyers. <laughs> so uh, there is a cottage <laughs> industry just to explain something that is relatively simple um, and we all make it quite complicated. 
No. So I think this course is uh, critical for anybody that wants to understand the basics. Um, and they will realize that they, there is not such no, a it's not. complex I, world I, as people I, try I, to I, present it, you know. I, I'm smiling, one because trust me, and I'm not, this is not self deprecating. I'm not that smart, but if you pay a bit of attention and if you talk to the right people and they use simple language, you can get your head around this stuff. You can get your head, you can get into the game. Uh, abs agree, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, Andrew. And I suppose, you know, by way, by way of wrapping up, maybe let's we circle back to first principles and talk about, you know, yeah. what are the objectives of the program as we've laid them out, you know. So what we're hoping that students who uh, register for the course will come to do is that we want them to understand distributed ledger technology and blockchain at the, at the basic level, to explore the various digital asset types and the use classes to navigate the global regulatory landscape. And that's a fast moving space. It's moving almost as fast as the technology, not quite as fast, but it's doing its best to keep up, uh, to, to, to help and uh, look at what compliance means in that fast moving world, to develop programs to respond, analyzing and reviewing real world uh, uh, use cases. And then, and, and as part of all of that, in conjunction with some really interesting guest speakers, and with some good material and what have you, that we're going to um, that we're going to pull together a, an opportunity for individuals to facilitate and become part of that convergence of of uh, because ultimately finance is finance is finance and uh, I, you know, I, I, I love we're saying that to, there to one size fits all. I was going to loop back to one, but I can't help myself saying that you know even when people you know they talk about fintech or whatever you know it's just financial services meets technology technology changes the way financial services are delivered in what way by whom what distribution what what we'd all i think like to see is and i think this is the opportunity in this greater access greater diversity you know creating more liquid markets and creating more capital because that's what helps economies so I come from that world, Dara. But what I also want to touch on there, and I might just loop back to one a little bit because he's 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 done a course with us before, is what PAT, I hope FinTech really what we differentiate ourselves. Every class, everything you do, all your engagements will be with industry practitioners, with people that actually understand the challenges, the opportunities. Dara is the program lead. Dara is um, extremely well versed in what we're talking about, but Dara also is going to bring in guest lecturers where appropriate to talk about different elements to what we do. And I might just, I'm not, I, I'm, I, this could go horribly wrong, Ryan, Ryan, but would would it be okay to say what we do is very much about what are the, not, what's the skills that you can bring to a work environment? And it's about the quality of the faculty and the delivery and the knowledge they share with you. Is, is that hopefully that's a fair thing to say? Yeah, de definitely. I think and we um, didn't plan this, by the way, for anyone else. We didn't plan this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, but I, I think uh, I totally agree. You know, because I have done, I suppose, two, two main courses with, with you guys, you know, and it's all around, it's very practical, but at the same time, um it's about finding that that balance with um industry knowledge yeah. um and um bringing the top lecturers you know that are actually working in um in the functions or the areas that they are teaching uh, and that is a good example you know as program lead um I think say the amount of experience that he has from traditional finance and asset management and blockchain technology, um, I think that's priceless. You know, you have to put um, all that together. And, and I think as well, Juan, I know you're, you're a big part of it because you're such a good kind of um, contributor and participant and collaborator. We're also very much about creating like a peer-to-peer -peer kind of learning network where if you need to ask a question, you all of a sudden know people you can go to and ask a question. And again, I might just throw this back to you, Dara. That that ecosystem, I think, is still quite embryonic. 
So the opportunity for hopefully potential learners in this course is that you can be part of, I think, an ecosystem that's only really starting to evolve. And that will create career opportunities for you. Absolutely. It's very much early days. And the uh, implementation of my car is going to be a, a real game changer. Um, you know, and we can see, uh, we can see, you know, uh, 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 the industry across Europe gearing up. You know, there's been a lot of developments. There's still a lot of, there's still a lot of sort of extra regulatory um, activity that's going on out there. Um, but increasingly, uh, both here in Europe and where I think I think it's yeah. fair to say in much the same way as with GDPR, we've very much taken a leadership role in establishing yeah. a regulatory framework uh, for for um, for these asset types to uh, to thrive within. Um, but equally in the US, you know, there's definitely a movement there. And I think there's a bit of sort of uh, uh, enthusiasm arbitrage going on between the uh, the reds and the blues on the on the US side at the moment. <laughs> That's a it's very just, polite way of saying that. <laughs> it, it's 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 so yeah, no, it's a, it's it's an exciting time. And I think, you know, um, while there are those who will who who will think nostalgically back to the Wild West days of uh, digital asset technology and what have you, I think uh, the bottom line is, is that, you know, I don't think anybody's going to be talking about digital assets or getting hung up on distributed ledger technology or Web3 or some of the terms that we're banding around today. I think four or five years time, it's just going to be finance. It's how we do business. Yeah. It's how we invest. Yeah, it's how we save. It's how we uh, husband our resources. You know, that, that's a hundred percent how I, in my own, whatever way, it's just the evol evolution of how financial services is delivered and how financial markets, capital markets um, are structured and operate. And technology literally just changes it. And sometimes it's bumpy. Sometimes it's more you know, seamless. But for me, as I said, um, the reason we do what we do is because I think there is a demand for people who have as behind me again the knowledge and skills to understand and help the industry evolve so look it's it's nearly 20 to 7 um i'm aware that it's quite a small crowd um so i just want to throw it out there does anyone have any questions uh just check the chat there's nothing in the chat no pressure but if you had a question just put your hand up throw it in the chat or throw a question out there I suspected that was what was going to happen next. Um, but look, um, I don't know if there's any final thoughts, Dara. Like, we're not into, as you and I often talk. Andrew, there is, there is yeah, a question on. on the chat. Yeah, go on. Oh, yeah, please. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Oh, my gosh. I'm not doing my job at all. Eight weeks. Eight weeks. Um, eight Wednesday nights. Um, as I said, um, thank you for the second question as well. Um, eight weeks, um, you know, probably Darren, what, three, four hours, everything is recorded. Yeah, it's well, it's um, roughly about 32 hours of content, um, yeah. over spread over eight weeks. So, um, uh, I should have starting on the 20th earlier, of September. Sorry, Darren, everything is recorded. So, as one would know, if you can't go to a live class, no big deal. We've actually, um, also done a lot of work on to make the recordings a little bit more accessible. They, they, we have now something called smart chapters. It's a bit more like a podcast. So we're very conscious that people um, can't always make the classes live. That doesn't matter. It, well, we, we would like you to attend the classes live, sorry. But, but obviously, if you can't, everything is recorded. Everything is on a virtual learning environment called Moodle. Um, eight weeks, no exam. It's, it's a very kind of practical, almost project-based assessment which we will help you with. We'll look at drafts. You know, it's really about trying to develop your learning, your practical learning. Will it run next year? Absolutely. We're, we're hoping that um, the course will run as frequently as there's demand for it, to be honest with you. Um, so at least once a quarter, if I can put it like that. So there's no pressure. Obviously, if you can't make it in the next intake, which I think is September 25th, fine. I'm sure we'll be running it again probably in January, mid-January, late January, probably not before Christmas. But again, what I would emphasize is 
we're kind of starting on a journey that we also don't believe that this course is the be all end all. This course will lead to pathways into people wanting to get a deeper dive into something else. Maybe there's another particular specialism that they want to get into. We don't know because obviously um, we're in an evolution, but we believe very strongly that you always have to start somewhere. And we believe that the course is um, a really good foundational stone. And when I say foundational, by the way, some people often think foundational means beginner's guide. No, foundational means you've got a really good baseline to work with. It's, it's, not, it's not about beginner's guide. Foundation means that you know more than most other people. And you can, you can apply that and you can um, hopefully leverage that. The course actually, I just noticed actually, funny enough, the brochure needs to be updated. The course is 750 euros um, for the eight weeks, the assessment, the badge and everything. And I think the brochure actually still says 800, Dara. I need, to, I need to change that. Apologies. I did actually pick up on that when I was prepping for tonight. So, yeah, look, it, it, is, it is a commitment. Um, it is obviously time and money. Um, you know, but again, um, we believe it's of high quality. Um, I think the badge, the recognition that the course brings you will create a lot of value for your own career. It is literally like any of these things, an investment in yourself. And I know that's a cliche, but cliches are cliches for a reason, because they happen to be true most of the time. It is an investment in yourself. So it, it, is, a, it is a decision. It is a personal decision. Um, my um, email is in the slides if you want to contact me. I very, 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 very frequently talk to people about whether a course is the right or wrong option for them. And I'm not in the hard selling business. I'm in the business that people do courses with us because it benefits their careers. And they say nice things about us. You know, I'm not, I'm not in the business of creating false expectations. Um, myself and Dara have often talked about this in the last few months. You know, we're trying to make a difference. We're trying to do the right thing. We're trying to create the talent. And in, in Ireland's case, because I am an Irish man, despite the accent, um, in Ireland's case, we would love Ireland to be seen as a great place to locate your crypto, virtual assets, whatever type business operations. We'd love that. But obviously, we're working in an EU environment. So we obviously also would like to see the EU. And it was well put there by Dara and, and Juan that I think the EU is trying to plant the flag, is trying to set a standard. And I do think the standard will be replicated to some degree by other jurisdictions, lo locations over time. And GDPR is a good example. The AI Act is a good example. But I think the EU is actually trying to do the right thing. Um, so uh, just looking at that exam, no exam. Sorry, just to be clear on that, no exam. I don't like exams, by the way. Yeah, one. Oh my God, how many times did you hear me say I don't like exams? But I'll help. Poor old one did have to do exams, but I don't like exams. I think practical applied assessment is a much better way for people to demonstrate the knowledge and skills that they can take from a course like this and bring into a work environment. And I can only re-emphasize before I go. Um, careers, careers, careers. Because, you know, developing the talent to help your career develops the industry. That's what we need. We need talent. And I use that word very carefully. You are the potential talent that the industry needs to evolve and execute on the potential. And that's why I do what I do. That's why Dara does what he does. That's why Juan hopefully studied with us and, and, and learned hopefully um, and contributed and developed the network and the community. So, look, I can see people dropping off a little bit as well, Dara. So I might just hand it back to you to say a few closing words, and then we'll finish up a little bit early, but that's fine. And I just want to thank everyone who did intend in person, particularly Juan, and we will share the recording and the slides with everyone else. Yeah, just to say, I think we've pretty much covered it all here, uh, Andrew. Um, just to say the brochure's there, gives you a pretty good idea of what's going on. Um, we're looking forward to a really exciting uh, and engaging uh, yeah. course. And we'd like to thank everybody for having joined us this evening. Thanks so much. 
Well, and you. we uh, hopefully we'll get to talk again soon. I, I I always like to finish up one see in the classroom, see in the classroom. All right, thanks. Thanks everybody. very much. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks. Um, I I'll give you a bell tomorrow, Ryan. I, I badly owe you a phone call. I'm sorry. Okay. Thanks, um, Andrew. Don't thanks, worry. Guys. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, bye. bye.